Hallo jullie, hoe gaan dit vandaag? Ik is baie opgewonde, en kijk ek het my oorbelle aan, en my hore is nie in die bola nie, um, en weet julle hoekom? Want ek gaan uitgaan vandaag om bloed te skenk. Ja, this is what it's come to. Dit is nou die type dinge waar die mens uiters opgewonde raak, is om te gaan bloed skenk. Want dit is anders as spar, in jou huis. So ja, maar in elk geval, Kom ons begin met vandagse Engelse woorde. Eigenlijk gister en vandag sin, want ek weet tyd gehad om gister video te maak nie. So, kom ons gaan. The first English word for today is hyperbole. Um, and the meaning of a hyperbole is exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. And the history of the word hyperbole is um, that in the early 15th century, it meant the obvious exaggeration in rhetoric. So uh, it's just saying something that is completely impossible, like I've told you 7,000 times or something like that, because you didn't obviously do that. Um, okay, so from the Latin word hyperbole and from the Greek word hyperbole, it means exaggeration or extravagance. And uh, the literal meaning of uh, the word is a throwing beyond. <laughs> uh, because the word hyper means beyond. And the word bowl means throwing or casting or the stroke of a missile, bolt or beam. I am pretty sure you are catching my drift. So the rhetorical sense is found in Aristotle and Isocrates. Um, those are olden day, I think, Greek philosophers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Greek in Greek there was always also a verb that was hyper hyperbolene, which means to throw over or beyond. Okay, so the sentence that I have for hyperbole for today is he vowed revenge with with the, the, the he vowed revenge with oaths and hyperboles. So that just means that it's excessive threats. That is probably not possible. You know how people often threat to kill someone, but they never do? That's a hyperbole. Except if you're a mobster or a gangster. Then it's not a hyperbole, then it's quite literal. <laughs> okay, so the next English word is melancholy. And melancholy is a word that I quite like. Not that I ever really feel melancholic, but okay. The meaning is a feeling of pensive sadness, typically with no obvious cause. So it's just, and it's also not related to depression. It's very, um, very important to make that distinction. It is not being depressed. That's, it's not the same thing. Being depressed is a, a clinical thing. Whereas melancholy is just someone who is sad. Like your tortured artists who are just so sad just because they want to be sad. And because they have existential crises most of the time. That's melancholy anyway so the history of melancholy it comes from the 13th century so it's quite an old word and uh, it was described as a mental disorder characterized by sullenness gloom irritability and propensity to causeless and violent anger from old french melancholy um, and if you have heard stories about the um, medicinal ways of the old olden day they believed that black bile caused mental illness which is um, something that one of your organs excrete and obviously that has been proven quite a long time ago already to be not the truth but that was what they believed back in the day um, and then the further explanation here is ill disposition anger annoyance uh, etc so in Greek it literally means the excess of black bile um, yeah, interesting. The last, with the, the current pandemic that is on our hands, um, I did some research on previous pandemics and it's quite interesting. It's a quite interesting read. So you're welcome to research um, previous pandemics to see how they dealt with it and what happened, etc. Anyway, so the sentence that I have for melancholic or melancholy, but I changed it to melancholic for the sentence was she felt a little melancholic, but she knew that the lockdown would eventually end. It's just a, a, a feeling of unease. I, I think I experienced it in the beginning of lockdown because of the uncertainty and not really knowing what 
to do with your whole day and just being so uncertain that you don't have a lot of drive i believe that is that is the meaning or the deeper meaning of melancholy anyway so now about the afrikaans so the afrikaans word that i get vandag is soort van dieselfde as melancholy maar die hield mal nie Okay, so die eerste Afrikaanse woord vir vandag is kapot. En ek hoop jy dit al gehoor, want dit sê so lekker. Ek is mal oor die woord kapot. Okay, dit beteken, onbruikbaar as gevolg daarvan dat het oud of stikkend is. Soos a tik machine, a pen, a grasneier, dit kan kapot wees. Um, en jy weet, in een sin kan jy sê iets soos, hy rai nog altyd met sy kapot ou kaart. En dan die tweede uh, betekenis kan wees aan die einde van jou krachten of baie moeg, so dit kan um, verband hou met de mens ook, nie net um, object nie, of uh, ja. En dan uh, die sinne wat voor, as voorbeeld by die beskrywing is, is jy weet, jy kan kapot wees na een lang reis, of na een moeilike dag op kantoor, en so aan. En dan waar kom dit vandaan? Dit kom uit fr- uh, Fran- uh, 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 Frans, die Franse taal, uit. Um, wat met de seer geskryf word, wat ook kapot is, het daarom in die kaartspel, in die uitdrukking sfeer kapot, ek neem, want dit is een Franse speelikie, kapot maak, dit beteken soos as jy die speelikie ben, dat jy al die, al die kaarte gekryf, en dit is wat kapot vandaan kom, baie interessant, ek is seker, jylle het ook al lekker kaart gespeel in die lockdown tijd, dit is nou, as jy nie soos ek alleen gelockdown is nie, ek is speel oe nou op my phone, dit is hard seer, Oké, okay, dan die tweede Afrikaanse woord is ingetoe en die beskrywing daarvan is besadig, stemmig, beheers. Dis iets wat ek omtrent nooit is nie. Ek weet nie of sikke op hulle plek dan is nog bestaan nie. Maar ja, dit is die typische kerk dan nie, met haar hoed en haar sykousies en haar hofskwinkies wat so met haar kniegies by mekaar mooi sit voor die kerk is ingetoe. Dit kom van die middel Nederlandse woord in tien, wat nie meer bestaan nie, maar wat jou inhou beteken het. Nou mag gaaf. En die sin wat ek het vir ingetoe is, oeg, dit raak elke dag moeiliker om ingetoe op te tree tijdens inwerking. En dit is nou, as jou familielede op jou senewees werk, dan raak dit alle moeiliker om jezelf in te hou, en jezelf te beteel, en jou gedagtes vir jezelf te hou. Dit is vir die algemeen van my probleem, dit en my gezichtsuitdrukkings. So, ek voel jammer vir die mense wat nog tot is waar hulle self kon inhou. Um, ja, moet nie dat die drukkoker ontplof nie. Maar in elk geval, mag jylle een lieflike dag verder he, en um, ek gaan bloed skenk, dit is die essential service, so ons mag gaan. Um, hulle het actually bloed ook nodig, so as jy kan bloed skenk, gaan skenk bloed. In elk geval, have a lovely day, everyone, en, um, ek sien jylle morgen, bye!